Okay, so we've practiced now finding critical values. Why critical values are important is because they're where we can find maxes and minimums or other important aspects of my graph. All right, so again, localize a relative max and mins is where the function usually switches from increase to decrease or, or vice versa. So remember, extrema, max and min, that's what extrema means, only happens at critical points. So you find your critical points and then you see if it's a turning point. And a turning point means it's going to change from increase to decrease or the other way around, decrease to increase. If it's the first version, it's a maximum. So if I'm changing from increasing to decreasing, it's a local max. The other way around, if I change from decrease to increase, it's a minimum. All right? And again, the book goes through over the shapes of those. If at my critical point, it's just a stopping point, or it's a vertical tangent, and there's no change, meaning either at that moment it will stop, so it's still critical, it's still important, or it's a vertical tangent, it's still important, there's a kink in my function, but on the, the left and the right of it, it's still doing the same thing, it didn't switch direction, so it's still staying increasing on both sides, or staying decreasing on both sides, it's not a turning point, so it's not an extrema, so it's just a critical, neither a max nor a min, just a critical. All right, you can use a table or a number line to test this, or graphical. And I'll kind of go over a little bit of all. I like to use a number line because that's my preferred method. Uh, so that's the method I'm going to use. If you've seen the table method, use a table method. Um, I will kind of go over how you can use the graphs to help you out as well because you have a graphing tool, your calculator, um, and is there to help you. All right, so the first example is a polynomial example. Solve algebraically or graphically. I think this one's easier to solve algebraically and then check it graphically. All right, so my polynomial is the 0.05x to the fourth minus 0.6x squared plus 2. All right, so I want to find maxes and mins. So the first thing you have to do is find your critical values. Find the critical values. All right, which means find my derivative and set it equal to zero in this case. So my derivative, this is just power rule, so I take my 0 0.05 times four, so 0.2x cubed minus 0.16 times two, so 3.2x to the first, the two zeros out. All right, it exists everywhere, so the only possibility for a critical value is setting it equal to zero. All right, so set it equal to zero and solve. Show when you're showing your work, show the set it equal to zero step. All right, then this is a factor case. In this case, the only thing I'm going to factor out is I can pull an x out of both terms. All right, I can pull an x out. So in the first term, I'm left with 0.2. I pulled one x out, which means I had two left over. And in the second term, I had the one x that I pulled out, but I still had the 3.2 left over. All right, there's the factoring, the algebra. And now, remember, the zero product is, as I set each one of those factors as zero and solve. So the first one just x equals zero, so there's a critical value. The second one, I have to do a little bit of work to solve for the critical value. So I have to isolate the x squared. And so, the prime is squared. x squared equals 16. Take the square roots. Remember, plus or minus when you take the square root. And so this comes out x equals 4 and x equals negative 4, right? I get plus or minus 4. And so there are my three critical values, which I'll write them as points at the end. So I'll find my points at the very end. I'll do that. Right now I'm just going to leave the critical values. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test for increase and decrease using a number line. Remember the number line, what the number line is, the number line represents the domain. For f of x, it's a polynomial, its domain is everything, all real numbers. And so when I draw my number line, it's going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Mark off my stopping points, right? That's what these critical values are. The critical values are stopping points. My derivative is zero, which means I've got a horizontal tangent. At zero, four, and negative four, my function stopped. It is not increasing and it is not decreasing. And so I mark off my stopping points, which are my critical points. And in order, 
So again, going from negative infinity to positive infinity, the first one would be negative 4, then 0, and then 4, right? It stops at negative 4, stops at 0, and stops at 4. Everywhere else, so between the negative 4 and the negative infinity, it's moving. Right? I have to figure out what direction it's moving, up or down. Between the 4 and the 0, it's moving. I've got to figure out what direction. And so to figure that out, we use the derivative. Right, we use test points. And so I'm going to use the derivative and pick some test points. So my derivative, and I want to know if it's positive or negative. And so picking test points, which means I pick values in each one of these intervals. Right? And you pick any value on there, infinitely many choices. All right, so suppose I pick negative 5, negative 1, positive 1, and 5. I always like to pick the same ones because a lot of times you get the same fallout. And so I'm testing the derivative at negative 5, I'm testing the derivative at negative 1, I'm testing the derivative at positive 1, and I'm testing the derivative at 5. And really what I want to determine at those values between my stopping points, is it moving up or moving down? So is it positive, moving up, or is the derivative negative, moving down? And so again, I'm plugging them into the derivative. So when I plug negative 5 in, all right, so I take my calculator out and I take my negative 5, so I take my 0.2 times negative 5 cubed minus 3.2 times negative 5, and so I get negative 9. Well, that's a negative. All right, so it's negative there, which tells me my original function f of x was moving down, right, decreased. Then it stopped, right, at this moment, stopped. Now I check the next interval. On the next interval, the test point I picked was negative 1, so I'm going to take my negative 1 and plug it in there, so I get 0.2 times negative 1 cubed minus 1.3 times negative 1, and that comes out positive 3. Well, that's a positive, right? which means it stopped at negative 4, but it did switch direction, so now it's moving up. So I use my little arrows to indicate it's moving up. All right, then it stops. All right, it zeroed it stop again, and then I check 1. All right, so I'm going to plug 1 in, so I get 0.2 minus 3.2, so that comes out a negative 3. All right, so that means it was negative, so it stopped at 0, and then it did switch directions. It's now moving down, right, because my derivative was negative between 0 and 4. All right, and then it stopped again. I plug 5 in, and when I plug 5 in, I get a 0.2 times 5 cubed minus 3.2. 2 times 5 cubed minus 3.2 times 5 comes out positive 9. And so that means this is positive. All right, so on this side of 4, it's a positive slope. So now it's moving up. And so it did switch directions every time. And the reason why I like the number line is because it kind of gives you the shape of the original graph. If I'm decreasing then increasing, well, this stopping point has to be a minimum. If I'm increasing, stop, then decrease, well, that has to be a maximum. And then the last point, if I decrease, stop, increase, minimum again. All right, so the number line kind of gives you the fallout. All right, so now my solutions. So first I'm going to write down the increasing, decreasing, and then I'll get to my relative maximums. All right, so the answers. F of x is increasing. Well, where am I moving up? I'm increasing between the stopping point negative 4 and the stopping point 0. So I'm increasing over the entire interval between negative 4 to 0. And you do put parentheses because it, it's not increasing at negative 4. It's between those numbers where it's increasing. Or the other place it's increasing is 4 to infinity, right? It's moving up from 4 and everything after 4. So for the positive infinity, it's increasing. f of x is decreasing well, wherever my arrows are moving down. And so the interval where it's decreasing, well, the first interval where it's decreasing is negative infinity to negative 4. Right? My slopes are all negative there. Negative infinity, negative. And then at negative 4, it stopped and switched directions. The other place it's decreasing, well, the arrow is moving down between 0 and 4. So 0 to 4 is where it's decreasing. All right, and those are all the places where it's decreasing.
All right, so there's the increasing, decreasing answers. And now my critical values, critical points, and whether they're max and mids. All right, so my first critical point that I'm going to write down was negative 4, f of negative 4. Right? I have to find f of negative 4. Remember, the y values go back to the original. So I plug negative 4 back up here in my original. So I'm going to plug my negative 4 in here. When I do that, I get out negative 4. When I take my original function, plug negative 4 out, I get negative 10.8. And then based on my testing, my negative 4 was a relative minimum. So this is a relative minimum. All right, so at 4, I get a relative minimum of negative 10.8. All right, now I'm going to do the 0. Plug 0, f of 0, f of 0, again, is a little easier. Right now, and I can just look and see what it is. When I plug 0 into my original function, I get 2 out. All right, so my critical value is 0, 2. Which, remember, if you go back and look at the test, 0 was a maximum. All right, so this is a relative maximum. All right, so 2 is a relative maximum. And then the last one, 4, f of 4, which due to symmetry it comes out the same, 4 comma negative 10.8. That was a relative minimum. All right, so there's my three answers. I had a relative minimum at the 4 and the negative 4 of the minimum value is the function value negative 10.8 maximum at 0, 2, all right, and so there are all my answers, and now we can check these, all right, so you can kind of check your answers, if you're again unsure if you got the right answers and did the work right, you can check using your graph, graph the original, so graph f of x, the original function, Right, which you can do this on your calculator. You can graph the original function. So again, you're going to graph the 0 0.05x squared minus 1.6x to the second plus 2. You will have to make your window a little bigger because if you do a standard window, notice this negative 10.8 is bigger than negative 10. So you'll have to go at least to negative 11 or negative 12 if you're, you're adjusting your window in the y direction. Right? Those are my y values. I'm just going to pop the graph up here. I'm going to let you kind of figure it out on your own. Uh, you will have to change your y minimum down below negative 10.8. All right, it is a w shape that comes out. All right, that's the shape that comes out. And so you get a w shape like this. There's my three critical points that I'm going to label in a second. All right, so there's f of x. If I label my critical points, this was the point for negative 10.8, this was the point negative 4, 10.8, this was the point 0, 2, if you want to write 2, 0, 0, 2. Those are critical points. If you look, each one of those moments I have horizontal tangent are their stopping points. If you look at the graph, this is a relative minimum, right? It's a minimum. It's actually an absolute minimum as well. We'll get to that in later sections. All right, relative minimum, and this is a relative max. And you can check your answers. From negative infinity up to the 4, right, that piece of the function, it is decreasing. Between 4 and 0, it is increasing. Between 0 and 4, decreasing and from 4 to infinity increasing. And so my answers all check. I have critical values where, so when you look at the graph, the graph sort of your check step. Everything checks. I've got stopping points where I should have stopping points, and they're the correct stopping points. They're maximums where I said I had maximums. They're minimums where I said I had minimums. And then the graph checks that it's increasing and decreasing where my number line said it was increasing and decreasing. And so this is sort of the check that I've done it right. My graph is, all right, yeah, it checks. Everything checks out. All right, we'll stop there. We'll do the second example in the next video.